this is a, let's face it, a very special Prime Minister. Mm. I'm not saying good or bad, mm. a very special. And he as an individual, in terms of capability, hard work, la la la, good for India, is an amazing person. That's right. Which again doesn't mean I agree with everything he does. Mm. I don't. But he's an amazing person. and. You can't have easily a better Prime Minister than him in India. And after UPA too, I'm sorry to say, and I knew most people in that government, uh, people don't even mind a one-man show or a d little tough guy because they said, when it was not tough, nothing was happening and only scams were happening. It's very difficult to get an endorsement of that kind from Rahul Bajaj, despite the fact that he also puts a caveat saying he may not agree with everything else. But let me ask you this question, and I'll talk on comparisons between the three people who have come in just a bit. But you know, um, uh, Sanjeev, uh, he's coming armed with a World Bank ranking that has gone up. He's coming armed with a Moody's upgrade. He's coming armed having rolled out the GST. Yes, the teething troubles are there, but a reform like that, waited for 10 years, is out. Uh, do you believe that's ammunition enough for him at Davos to woo the audience? Uh, what is it that the globe is expecting? from Mr. Modi? See, that's again uh, a question which different people will answer Supriya in different ways. Mm. And uh, it's difficult to say what the overall world is expecting. But the theme of the conference this year is how do you stay connected in an increasingly fractured world? Fractured world? Right. We saw last year President Xi of China mm. talk about China's role in getting the world together. And I hope we see the Indian Prime Minister talk about how India can play that role as well. Uh, over the last few years, uh, there are a number of measures India has taken and what you've just talked about mm. to make India a more attractive place. Mm. But along with that, India has a larger uh, opportunity and I would say a responsibility with the size that we are now mm. to play a role in the larger world as well. So I hope we hear something about that. But who do you believe he's addressing at Davos? Is he addressing global leaders? Is he addressing the multinationals here to come and invest in India? Or is he keeping an eye on the Indian audience? And by that, I also mean Indian industry. And what is it that in that context would you hear him say? My, my assumption is that he will address the global audience, he will address the global business leaders who will be here. Mm. There's a very large, I think the single largest That's group true. of heads of state and heads of government over the next That's few right. days uh, yes. over here in Davos. Mm. Uh, and I'm sure while he's just there for 24 hours, he will be meeting many of them. I don't think this is only about the Indian community because he's already been doing that and uh, and we are there in India so we can see that. So I hope it is to the larger audience. Before I move to back to Sanjeev, I have a quick question to ask of you. You mentioned Mr. Devagoda, you mentioned Narsimha Rao. You know, they came in 1997 last and, you know, India was a very different market, a very different country. Uh, our place in the world was very different. How do you believe um, uh, the, the three prime ministers now compare. Mr. Modi is the first prime minister in liberalized India to have full majority. He comes armed with the political mandate as well as, you know, the economic reforms he's undertaken. In that sense, how do the prime ministers in the past and him compare? You can't even compare. It's not fair to compare people and comparisons are odious. Having said that, as you said, 97, 99 something and 2017, mm. they're very different people, but 20 years of time, God, what? second the people, mm. with no offense intended, what did you expect from Deva Gaura? He comes with all his family here. What the hell are we talking about? I'm very sorry. I know him. I met him. Uh, he's a nice guy, mm -hmm. but nice guy is not what we need here. Nasir Rao didn't do so badly. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, now it's very different, but this was after 1991 mm -hmm. liberalization, which he started, mm -hmm. of course, with the help of Manmohan Singh. Mm -hmm. But Manmohan Singh couldn't do anything political but for the support for Nasir Rao. Right. So he had a good image at that time. Mm. And he did, I'm told, I don't remember now, uh, he told, he did okay. Mm. But the way he was, you can't compare him with Narendra Modi, his allocation, his communication, the way he communicates. Mm. So the world is expecting a lot, and we as Indians are expecting a lot, not for India. He's done enough for India in terms of his reputation all over the world, and mm. we just think it should be another further icing on the cake. And I'm not worried about April 19, uh, May 19, 2019. He, I'm sure, is concerned, as he should be. Uh -huh. uh, that what he does here is not going to affect that. I don't think.